I was told you were coming. So, who do you kill for fun around? If this girl gives him one minute of happiness, it is one minute too yeah, much. Baby. This is not Angel anymore. I'm back. Jeez. I don't like vampires. I'm take a stand and say they're not good. Fucking fantastic. I love that sound. Uh, the ice cream bar is this way. Welcome to Beer with Buffy. I'm Josh. I'm Rex. This week we actually have an episode that I have feelings about. <laughs> As it, opposed to the last few? You didn't it, have feelings about them? <laughs> I was pretty dead inside for the last couple. Uh, you know, I can't really blame you. Yeah, I I didn't hate them, I didn't love them, and here we are. If I sound weird, it's because I've just gotten over a cold. I think I'm still getting over said cold. So if you are disconcerted by my voice, go fuck yourself. If you are at all <laughs> concerned for Rex's well-being, which I know you're not, <laughs> give us a call. <laughs> Not again. No. I didn't say on the air, but on the air. <laughs> we're hot. We're on the wire. We're live. Again. <laughs> five, five, five. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Beetle. It's too many numbers and a word. It doesn't work. All right, Rex. <laughs> Remind me not to clap for you when you die. <laughs> Ass. I can clap for myself, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Let me know how that works out. <laughs> Call me from your grave it's at 555 1234 <laughs> Rex is fucking dead. Well, so, <laughs> clapping for myself is about as effective as, you know, my current sex life. I believe in you, Rex. I believe <laughs> in you. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Just, just stop. Oh, good. My slow clapper is still working. <laughs> Thank God. There's an app for that, I'm sure. <laughs> so this is episode, uh, or season two, episode 11. Good, I watched the right one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank Christ. I had a moment. <laughs> I had a moment where I'm like, fuck. I felt it. It was palpable. Right? Yeah. Should we pause? Nah. Okay. I didn't hear anything. I don't know what you're talking about. Did you, Ben? I really hope that showed up on the, on hey, the recording. Hey, he's actually here this time. Hey, Ben, you want to come say hi to the viewers? No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you caught that, but Ben said go fuck yourself. The curmudgeon dick dickbag in the background <laughs> who has made all of your fancy music has just made his first debut on Beer with Buffy. Yep. <laughs> Excellent. Also, he gets... All I'll thank you due to the fact that Josh and I were not paying attention to what the fuck time it was. Yes. <laughs> also, he gets the distinction of being the very first guest artist on a live recording of Beer with Buffy. Yes. Oh ever. Ah. Like, ever, you guys. Come say hi. Ermagerd. Hi. No, that no, doesn't. No, no, no. Actually, that's not come, good enough. That's come not good and enough. say hi to the Get mic. over here. Hey. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that's your composer, everybody. <laughs> yep. Gosh, we sure know how to pick him. Uh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we didn't pick him for his radio personality. <laughs> That's, you're not wrong. Nor for his looks. <laughs> He's a very pretty man. Not as pretty uh, as me. In your eyes, no one is as pretty as you. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> your voice is drowning out my beautiful. <laughs> Do you mind? Oh, God. Yeah, how about a mom synopsis? Let's actually get this moving. Yeah, I... Joshua! <laughs> what's happening? Why is Buffy getting in an argument with a robot? <laughs> First of all, Mom, you didn't know he was a robot. Admit it. <laughs> no, you're right, but I've been stealing your memories with this fancy new app that I downloaded. <laughs> It's what called Steal Your Son's Memories from 20 years ago. Yeah, I uh, I guess there's an app for that. There's an app for everything. Hey, wait a damn second. You don't know how to download shit, Mom. Damn it, you got me, Joshua. <laughs> how did you know? Well, uh, you, were, you were being a little too informed. A little too uh, 
Joshua, clean your room. You're a wonderful son today. See, <laughs> just like in the episode, that's that's how Ted was. He was like, I am malfunctioning. I am a robot named Ted. And if you didn't get the whole episode from that, then I don't know what will. <laughs> Are you calling me a robot, Joshua? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's that's your mom's synopsis today. I have if, so many things I could say. <laughs> all are inappropriate. <laughs> Excellent. So a little history on something that makes this episode extra stupid fucking creepy for me is, um, all joking aside, my mother actually had a creepy, awful douchebag of a boyfriend named Ted when I oh. was... Fuck, when I, didn't I was know when, that when I was growing up. Oh my god, that's that. Yeah. Is... I'm not. I'm not going to go into any detail because this is supposed to be a fun podcast. So yeah, that's moving on from there. <laughs> is this for me? I must be ready. I need my strength. Strength. Give, 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 give me more. Nights I shall give, walk give, in here. Hold on. You've got something here. Huh? So we actually open. I have a question though. I don't know what Captain Intenil is. It's how how handy is that that I looked it up. So Captain Intenil were a married couple in the seventies, um, and they were as as Wikipedia describes it, recording artists. They okay. were just they were a two person band that happened oh. to be married, and so, so his, yeah, the Scooby Gang is walking or Willow. Xander, Buffy, walking down the street at night, talking about Captain and Tennille. Yeah. Buffy doesn't have any fucking clue who Captain and Tennille are. Nor should she. I'm I'm glad that she didn't. I'm glad that you didn't. <laughs> right? I feel okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, and because Xander just had to go and be that fucking prick who's like, oh my god, you're not familiar with this particular piece of media that I'm ultra familiar with? What the fuck yeah. is wrong with you? The exact thing that people expect our podcast to be like. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we're not, right? No. We I hope. don't think we are at all. Mostly, I don't think we, either of us, know enough to be that way. <laughs> Definitely. If you think we're like that, please hop on our page and tell us to fucking knock it off. Yeah. It's like... Because we will. Yeah, seriously. We, we, unqu we don't want to do that. No, we hate <laughs> that shit. And we don't ever want to come off that way. So... Xander immediately starts jinxing that no shit has been going on. Right. But he acknowledges that he's jinxing it. You know, and that's good, I hey, guess. While this Captain and Tennille thing is still uh, relevant, <laughs> I... <d> <laughs> Actually, what I have to say is not funny. I'm about to be a huge drag. I kind of feel like we need to dedicate this episode to um, Captain Daryl Dragon because he actually, he died at the age of 76, January 2nd this year. Really? Yes. Shit. So, this one's for you, Captain. I Cheers. You and the Captain make it happen. Yeah, damn. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that actually kind of segues into the next thing I'm going to say, because, uh, they come into Buffy's house mm -hmm. and Buffy's a little freaked because the door's unlocked. Yeah. And come to find out that her mom, Joyce, is currently making out with her new boyfriend, Ted, in the, in the kitchen. Played by John Ritter. Speaking of dead 70s icons. Oh, dude, I miss John Ritter. Yeah. He was a cool dude. I fuck. Oh, I, I, you never hear anybody talk about John Ritter and go, oh man, I felt neutral about that guy. No, everybody fucking loved John no, and Ritter. He's excellent in this episode. He is. He's fucking, fucking amazing. Excellent. He's, he's too like, good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he really is. Oh my. Uh. He's like the level of off putting that he is able to portray is. For lack of a better way to put it, off-putting. Yeah. Like, I was... He's terrifying. It made my skin legitimately crawl. Yes. And it, the level of too nice is just ridiculous. Would you say and, that your skin crawling was similar to the experience of thinking about a fingernail being pulled oh God, out? Fuck you. <laughs> yes. For instance, if we were watching Jeff Goldblum in The Fly. Oh God, no, stop it. Why do you got to pull <laughs> shit from our sound check? <laughs> it's a variable golden pot of oh, yeah? forest of 
Awesome. Putting worms on hooks. Ha! <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Oh, it only God makes damn. my skin crawl when I'm actually doing it. So, why you gotta pull stuff from the last episode, Rex? Jeez. But yeah, so John Ritter was one of my favorite actors growing up. Um, I actually watched the show, what is it, Ten Rules to Date My Daughter. I can't remember the actual number in the title. But, yeah, I don't even know the name um, of the TV show that made him famous. Uh, Three's Company. Okay, that uh, sounds um, familiar now. I just, I fucking love John Ritter. You know, and he died in 2003. I remember him mostly from that movie the, with the satellite dish movie, right? No, no, no. Oh, there, there, it was um, Problem Child. Mm. Yeah, his yeah, he definitely. adopts a kid, and the kid's a nightmare. Um, the The biggest on screen presence that I ever I remember is I wish I could remember the name of the movie, but there's a movie where he gets a a satellite dish from hell. <laughs> and it like teleports him into these TV shows that are like from hell. Hmm. And like it's it's really fucking weird. That's probably why how and why they got him to do this role. He must have a weird thing for evil technology. I think he does. Yeah. I but anyway, you know, rest in peace John Ritter. Definitely. Died in 2003. This this episode definitely goes out to you yeah. also John Ritter. John Ritter and the captain make it happen. And luckily, I'm sure neither of them will fuck up the roof of your mouth. So, right. bonus. Yeah. Yeah. So, we get introduced to Ted. Mm-hmm. Ted is Joyce's boyfriend. And immediately, everything about him screams bad guy. <laughs> right. So, she walks in on them making out in the kitchen. Awkward moment, opening sequence. And then we come back to... Buffy's house where uh, he's getting along really well with everybody. Too fucking well. Way too well. Like, he promises Willow some awesome soft, free software. Yep. And uh, he, he apparently invented um, Bagel Bites pizza. Apparently. It's, that's what it looked like to me. Yeah. I mean, they said they were, they were just mini pizzas throughout the show. They were, either, they were either Bagel Bites or like on English muffins. Huh. But they were yeah. about the size of an English muffin. Yeah. Yeah. And they he like... Look, they sounded delicious. They did. He like apparently <laughs> pseudo deep fried it in a cast iron pan. I actually, uh, upon watching this, was like, I got to figure out what like what this is. And I want to try that. Yeah. Yeah. Because I have plenty of cast iron. You do. Oh, hmm. man. I And little pizzas sound lovely. So <laughs> the transition from this scene... Though, it's just <laughs> excellent. It was, <laughs> it was wonderful. You know, I was having a rough day, and I must say that it was really cathartic to see Buffy just fuck up a vampire for the sake of it. Beat to a bloody pulp, a as Giles put it. <laughs> pulp. A pulpulous but mush. Again, they do that same thing where they're like, are you fine with this? And Buffy's like, yeah, I'm fine. And then immediately cut <laughs> to the next scene where she is not fine. Which, as we all know, <laughs> means not fine. Dig this. Dig this. Sorry, you has a wind. Fire beheading. Hurry up, sweet dreams. Sunlight. Hurry up, sweet dreams. Water. Usual. Oh, yeah. I hit him. What? A desk. It cuts to Buffy fighting a vampire. And she, like, grabs this uh, trash can lid and is just beating him with it. Giles looks over and is like, okay, it's time to stake him. <laughs> yeah, I think and it's, she's uh, just beating him with the trash can might, lid. It might be about time to uh, for, the, for the staking. And then he sits down. <laughs> no, I missed that. <laughs> he, and he's just like, okay, I guess I'm waiting. <laughs> and she just continues to beat the vampire to a bloody pulp. Yeah. God, you know, it really made me wish that uh, I had an outlet like that. It's the first time I've ever truly been jealous of Buffy. Oh, it definitely at the moment feels cathartic. Yeah. But overall, it actually makes you more angry and increases the anger in general and makes the problem bigger at the very least i definitely need more exercise so buffy's <laughs> like we all yeah 
So Buffy's like, people are doing perfectly fine, and, and then vampires start running around and killing people, and then they take over your whole house, and they start making these stupid little mini pizzas, and everyone's like, oh, I love mini pizzas, blah, 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 blah. and Giles is like, uh, Buffy, I believe the subtext here is rapidly becoming a uh, text. <laughs> I'm like, that's a good way to put it. It is. I- <laughs> and I'm, if I ever get the chance, I'm going to say that. Why am I not taking notes on this? Oh, wait. <laughs> I did. As opposed to previous episodes, Giles actually is like, do you want to talk about this? Like, you should talk about this. We should have a conversation. Like, what is wrong? Yeah. And Buffy doesn't want to talk about it, but he's actually like doing the good father figure role here. Uh Uh-huh. And like handling it well and intelligently. And good job, Giles. Yeah. Do you remember... I think it was episode one of season two when she's smashing up the master's bones and Giles didn't quite understand what was going on. He was like, uh, I, but Xander did, but Xander did of all people. I, yeah, I thought it was interesting that we kind of had another one of those angsty fuck up a vampire moments and Giles is learning. He is. Everybody has room for improvement. Even the ones who seem perfect. Exactly. Yeah. Back to school. Yep. Immediately into another quote of the day for me. So, um, yeah, so we've got um, Buffy, Willow, and Xander, who I discovered you can abbreviate as Blax. 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 Buffy, Willow, and Xander. Blax. Okay. Yeah. I just usually write Scoobies. So I'm going to get a tattoo now. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) <laughs> don't don't get that as a tattoo. Get him <laughs> Might make it a tramp <sighs> stamp. I might just get it on my forearm. I haven't decided yet. At least put a picture around it. Don't just get the letters. Oh no, just the letters all the way right it, above in y- old English. Right above YOLO. In old English, probably. Sure. That's the most like pretentious. And I'll make thing sure they misspell of. it so that I can have one of those funny <laughs> meme tattoos. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So you had a quote of the day. Yes. And I I failed to write down the lead up to this, but Buffy and, and Xander are talking. Buffy's expressing issues with Ted. Mm-hmm. Uh, Xander is just like got the greatest heart on for Ted. <laughs> well, for as many pizzas anyway. Oh, yeah. But I don't think he gives a shit about Ted. <laughs> right. True. The food. Yeah. Definitely the food. Which, you know what? Who can blame him? They always say the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. And I've never really had the heart to disagree because it, they're, it's accurate. They're busy filling it with hamburgers. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I don't remember the, the lead into the line from Willow here, but she says, it's a clean clown. And then Buffy and Xander both look at her and she goes, I have my own fun. And it's a good moment. What? Who? That's exactly as random as it's supposed to be. Willow said that? Yes, Willow says that. It's a clean clown? Yes. As in, like... She says... It's a, she, like, clean. chuckles, and she says, it's a clean clown. And then they look at her awkwardly, and she go, she meekly goes, I-, I have my own fun. God, I must have been thinking about mini pizzas. Okay. Probably. Cool. And Xander is being a dick in this scene. Douche, because Ted shows up. Yeah. A little too quickly and conveniently. I mean, Xander at least has the wherewithal to be like, hey, Buffy, Ted's right behind yeah. you. Hey, clever warning. Uh, yep. Ted, who is here right now behind you. Anyway, so he invites them to play mini golf and gives Willow a stack of fucking floppy disks. <laughs> oh, is that what that was? That I was th- floppy disks. I thought it was a little box. That's funny. It was like four or five floppy disks nice. with a rubber band. So, (laughs) hey, man, that's how I installed Doom 2 on my computer the first time. (laughs) Good times. Good times. God, we're old. I know, right? (laughs) But fucking Xander just completely steamrolls, just completely steamrolls over any concern for Buffy's misgivings about Ted. Yeah. And just makes plans for all three of them simultaneously. Ted's like, oh, we got, we're going to go mini golfing. And Buffy's like, oh, we have that thing. And turns to Willow, and Willow's like, yeah, we have that thing. And Xander's like, 
No, you know what? I'm tired of that thing. We always do that thing. We're going to go mini golfing instead. Yeah. We need to start keeping score uh, on asshole points for Xander. I That might be worth a whole new segment on the show. Actually. Uh, I don't know if we have that. Like, I already go through enough paper with my notes, dude. I don't know if there's enough space on my hard drive for that. No, really. <laughs> Like, I wish I was exaggerating, for <laughs> fuck's sake. So, <laughs> yeah. What an asshole. But yeah, Ted's still off-putting. Yeah, just like, like, nobody's that nice. This is, hey, little girl, do you want some candy nice? Right, yeah. Like, get into my, my <laughs> unmarked van. Show me your van. <laughs> Where are the cheese sandwiches? So... It's creepy as fuck. So... A couple of old friends of mine had this running gag one time about starting up a traveling miniature golf course and they <laughs> and they were going to and they were going to dump all of the money into advertisement and then when they get phone calls for an event they just show up with a van that has like some astroturf in the back end and step out of the back of the van oh, and God. with a putter and be like here you go kids knock yourself out <laughs> I hope they weren't like legitimately thinking of it. Was this. A, it I just said it was a running joke. It's hard for me to say anything cool or, or witty or at all. I, I can usually make a few vowel sounds and then I have to go away. I don't mean to interrupt your downward mobility. Yeah. You're the slayer and just wanted to we're like you. the slayerettes. Oh, please. All right. So moving on. Uh, we go to Giles, who is checking in on Miss Calendar. Yes. Uh, awkwardly. Whom we haven't seen for several episodes. No, and uh, their interaction is kind of touching. And it actually kind of hit very heavily. Is it touching, Rex? Who were you touching? I wasn't touching anybody. It, like, touching, like, as in emotionally touching. Show me on the doll, okay? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> this hit home for me. Okay. Because. Synopsis eyes. Basically, the scene that we have here is Giles is worried and checking in on her because he is worried about her well-being. Yes. But he is overdoing it because he's worried. So he is checking in too much. He's having difficulty giving her space. Right. I can very much relate to this because I am also like this when it comes to people that I worry about. And it really hit hard for me to watch this. It <laughs> it was it was difficult to watch. Like I, they, they both had excellent points, and yeah. he clearly felt um legitimate, sincere concern, but was clearly not helping her as much as he wanted to. He just couldn't in that way and because she specifically says. Essentially, she that he is putting it on her to just be okay. She's making her feel guilty and responsible f for not being okay yet, and she just can't handle the pressure. Yeah, and that's such a good and, way of putting oh. it. The way they put it in the show is really good. Kudos on this scene and the characterization between Miss Calendar and Giles in this episode because. It's barely in this in the this episode, but it is exceptionally well written. It is exceptionally acted, and it the characterization is phenomenal. I completely agree. So I'm the doll. Hot or cold? Just say hot or cold. I'm pointing Stop around my body. Being weird. Where would you say the trauma was most prominent? Was it, where did the in the vicinity that encompasses you, Josh? <laughs> Josh, right now you are Was the trauma. Around here, right now, Josh, you are the trauma. Where did the trauma traumatize you? You, you're traumatizing me right now. I do declare. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> well. Oh, you disturb me sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I wonder how we are friends. <laughs> and then I remember 
right. I have a weird sense of humor, too. <laughs> you still think it's funny. Yes, I uh, do. <laughs> so, but anyway, no, I the whole thing sucks. It just sucks. It does. It and sucks you really, around like, approximately. Oh, God. You kind of... Why do you always have to take it to the dirty place? Pretty close to the kneecap, I'd say. That is not where you were gesturing. <laughs> a little bit up around the armpit. Oh, God. You're... Anyway, yeah. It it sucks for both of them. You can totally like relate to both of them and empathize with both of them. So from here, we go to Angels, briefly. There's a lot of shortcuts in this, or I don't know what the fuck to call them. Quick there's, cuts? There's, yeah, I would call them mini scenes. Like, yeah. scenes that consist of multiple settings. Uh, or, I mean, as we put it as we put it in previous episodes, just a lot of back and forth editing. Yeah, but even not as much back and forth. Because a lot of times they'll cut between two locations back and forth. But this, like we go to, we cut to angels for like two or three lines. Yeah. I, and then we move on. I swear they brought in Aaron Sorkin on this fucking episode. Like, I don't know who that is. Oh, he directed The West Wing. He's famous. Ooh. He's famous for the walk along shots. Ah, ah, okay. We didn't really have any walk along shots, though. But. No, no. But I know what you mean. Yeah, I, yeah, I feel that. I feel that. Yeah, it, it's in the pacing. It's in the pacing. Yeah, yeah. But Angel here is actually like giving good insight. His point is valid. However, Ted is way creepier than Buffy can properly articulate. Angel's point is basically, will any guy ever be good enough for your mom? Right. It's enough to be like, hey, Buffy, maybe you need to have a little bit more of an open mind. Yeah. And that is valid. Yeah. Of course, she would fall into that trap and it would end yeah. up being, you know, a trap. On to mini golf. Mini golf. <laughs> yeah. Strike one for Teddy. <laughs> oh, my. First off, he's starting off. It seems fine at first for moments at best. So, very first red flag, in my opinion, was he's asking her, oh, I bet you're a big beacon for the boys. And she's like, yeah. oh, no. And then her and Willow quickly have to cover up that she's dating Angel. Yep. And he's like, well, I guess that means your grades will be improving soon. And I'm like, oh, fuck, no. Yeah. Oh, hell you no. No ground. Oh, see, And Joyce no. is just going along with this. And she's just eating that shit like, right I, up. I wrote brainwashed much right which you know more on that later yes um i didn't even i didn't even guess that that was the case uh -huh. i had seen this episode before yeah. and had forgotten about that might part. as well just say it now we find out later that she's literally being drugged yeah all the food that ted makes is drug drugged which is With why everyone who eats the food loves him yes and buffy doesn't love him because she's not eating the food right with like a special cocktail of ecstasy and some other shit but yeah basically to cut it quick Buffy cheats on the, the mini golf course and Ted is like slapping his leg with the golf club. It very Super. in a way that would, be, that would hurt like hell. Yeah. And just being like, I will slap that grin off your face, young lady. Mm -hmm. And just very aggressive. And the minute anybody else is there, immediate change of tone. Yeah. And he was like, I... I won't have anybody behaving this way and disrespecting me in my house. And I'm like, Jesus, you've been dating her for like maybe a, yeah. a week. From here, we cut to Buffy's house. Buffy even is like, hey, mom, he threatened me. And she just just shrugs it off. She's like, he said no such thing. And frankly, I didn't even believe the look on her face. I didn't believe that she believed what she was saying. No. And I couldn't tell if that was either really good acting or really bad acting. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm really not sure because... <sighs> like, she was either portraying <sighs> massive self-delusionment really well... Or she couldn't even convince herself as an actress for the role <laughs> that Ted was a good guy. Right. But either way, it was the same result and it worked. Yeah. It was good. This scene is especially off-putting. Yeah. Because it's the it's the first moment in the episode where I'm like, what the fuck, Joyce? And it's fun to look back and realize that <sighs> as bu when Buffy left, Joyce was eating up some candies yep. that Ted had left yep. for her. So... Really good job on their, yeah, on their setup, 
Um, they knocked it out of the ballpark. Oh, dude, they were they were on point for this episode. For this episode, definitely. definitely. This was this was not the B team writing this episode. Yeah, they like the the A team was busy the last ten episodes although, writing this episode. Although you also got to give a fuck ton of credit to John Ritter. Oh my god, <laughs> yes. If it weren't for John Ritter, I don't think the the level of lovable creepy. <laughs> that's the, I think that's the only way to put it. Yeah, he just fucking nails it. It makes your skin crawl. Yes. But he's John Ritter, so you're like, I gotta love him. Like, I wish they had had him play the worm guy. Like, maybe he could have oh saved... Oh my god, that would have been terrifying. <laughs> right. But I'm glad they didn't waste him on that. Yeah. Anyway, so Joyce is like, I want you to be home promptly at six for dinner with Ted. Oh boy. So first we go to the school where Buffy is saying, hey, Willow, I want you to look him up, you know, hack things that you have to hack, you know, find out if he's a bad guy, find out what you can find out about him and everything. Yeah. Buffy's arguing with Willow and Xander. Obviously, Willow's going to help. Yes. Um, Buffy puts Xander in his place quite nicely. Yes. Yes, Um, she does. Which is, you know. Nice for a change. <laughs> the, the bit between Cordy and Xander in this scene, though, cracked me the fuck up. Excellent. <laughs> I loved it. Cordy walks up. Xander's like, hey, you look nice. And she's like, what? <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> and he, he's he's just stunned. <laughs> and he's like, it, it means you look nice. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I'm trying to compliment you. <laughs> honestly, I kind of wish they'd kept up the uh, the the insulting back and forth banter um, just as a show. Yeah. Because they could have had some fun moments with that. Right. Honestly, I think this is a lost opportunity. But Cordy storms off and Xander follows after her. And this is the moment where Willow looks to Buffy and she's like, what's up with those two? Yeah. Willow obviously knows something is up yeah she did she's way too fucking smart and knows xander way too fucking well but (laughs) xander catches up with cordy and they both agree they don't want to tell anybody that they've made out but hey let's go make out in the closet (laughs) (laughs) xander's a lot more confident that neither of their groups of friends are going to find out than she is but yeah yeah no the delivery was spot on so it, everything's fine. You want to go make out in the utility closet? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> Good times we're at. Yes. So, so now this is when Willow has found out where Buffy, where Ted works. Yeah. First off, I thought with the way it was portrayed earlier that Ted like ran his own computer shop. I didn't realize he's a he he's a fucking telemarketer, which makes him more evil. Well, he's a salesman. I don't know that that necessarily makes him a he's telemarketer. He's selling shit over the phone, Josh. Selling shit over the phone is called telemarketing. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can't argue that. He's um, a telemarketer. He's evil. <laughs> he is evil incarnate. I don't care if he's a robot. He's evil. Yeah. If there's any telemarketers <laughs> listening to the show, you're wrong. Exactly. Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> Why would you do that? I love the, the co-worker in this scene. Though. Yeah. That fucking guy. Because <laughs> she pretends to be a temp. Apparently, Ted is the best fucking salesperson ever. Mm-hmm. Ever, ever. They call him the machine. The machine. See? The the <laughs> foreshadowing there? But his co-worker is like, if I sound bitter, it's because I am. Yeah. <laughs> this is where we get the hint that Ted is planning a wedding. Yeah, he t- like this. his co-worker fervently is looking forward to this guy getting married so that yeah. he'll be out of the office for a little while. Oh, and then... The the line that gets me is like, I can't believe he let her uh, clutter. clutter his desk with there's one fucking picture of Joyce on his desk. But it turns out, because Buffy checks it after Ted leaves, that it's a 
picture of Buffy and Joyce. Yeah. And he's folded Buffy away Uh behind Joyce. And that is like extra fuck you. I didn't find that particularly egregious. Honestly, I mean, coupled with the marriage thing. The marriage thing. And no, the marriage thing absolutely is off the charts fucked up because we know that he hasn't proposed yet. Yeah. Yeah. Which goes into the dinner scene. Dinner. Duh, dinner. Because we haven't seen the bronze. Oh, we yeah. haven't seen the bronze for like no, a it's while. not even in this episode. I know what the fuck. That's why I wanted to say duh, <laughs> dinner. I in this scene have to give major points to Sarah Michelle Geller mm-hmm. because her expression in this entire scene cuts to the core of your soul. Oh yeah, I I knew exactly <laughs> how I would feel in that situation and exactly how I would at least want to respond if I had the stone cold nerve that she has. Like I couldn't have kept my cool. Oh God. She kept her cool. How did she not like hit the table and break the fucking thing in half? Cause you know, she could. Yeah. How she didn't just like spiral kick over the table (laughs) and rip his face in half. No, Cause she immediately is like, are you engaged? Cause if he called her little lady one more fucking time, I was about to go look up (laughs) John Ritter's fucking (laughs) closest relative and slap them on principle. Right. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, Oh, like I'm, I'm getting chills just fucking talking about it. (laughs) (laughs) He does that nice creepy so fucking well. Yeah. Oh my god. It's the worst kind. Yeah. So he she at Buffy asks if they're engaged. He says that they're not, but he would like to someday. Geniusly uses it as a great segue into I might be asking Joyce to do that relatively soon. And I'm just like Bleh. And nah. she's just eating out of his hand. Yeah. Well, she's drugged. Well, yeah. So we know that now. Now. Yeah. But like through this whole fucking episode, like the whole time, I'm like, what the fuck, Joyce? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. If they had next scene, what the fuck, Joyce? If, if they hadn't added in that <laughs> drugged element, like, I, oh, yeah, Joyce would have been <laughs> unredeemable. <laughs> Completely. Completely. Especially because... After him saying, oh, we might get engaged someday, he he looks at Buffy and he says, how would you feel about that? And she says, I might kill myself. <laughs> and just the sincerity in her voice, it kind of fucks me up. And her as an actress, still only being maybe 20 years old at this point. Yeah. What did she go through? But fuck you, Joyce. Like, I know you're drugged, but holy shit, your daughter is just like, I might commit suicide. And you get pissed at her uh-huh. and tell her to go to her room? Yeah. Th- this was like the only point in the show where I was like, a one point for Ted. Because Joyce was like, Buffy, how dare you? And he was like, no, 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 no. I told her to tell the truth and, yeah. to, and to express herself. And it was Well, it was certainly Ted's only redeeming moment. Uh, yeah. Although, aside from the idea of the mini pizzas, that is amazing. <laughs> From here, we cut to Buffy outside the house. Obviously, she didn't go to her room and stay there. Yeah. So she goes out to kill some vampires. No vampires show up. She immediately comes back. But when she crawls back in through her window, Ted is in her room and has gone through her shit. And classic trope, he's sitting there in the dark. He wasn't smoking a cigar and drinking, unfortunately. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. It was well done. It was super creepy. And he's going through her diary. Accuses her of making shit up because in her diary, she talks about being the vampire slayer. Calls her delusional. He calls it his house again. Oh, it's just... And he calls her little lady again. And I'm like, God damn it. And then refuses to give back her diary. Oh, yeah. And she kicks his ass. Well, I mean... Yeah, I I must say, oh my 
God, it's good, though. Buffy's line completely mirrored my emotions and thought process <laughs> when he hit her. And I was like, oh, shit. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, that means. Because she's like, I've been waiting for this. It's over. <laughs> You're fucking done. Holy <laughs> shit, she kicks his ass. And it, it it was this was the most this whole moment is nothing but pure good old fashioned American instant gratification. <laughs> oh yeah. Just to see him get the absolute fuck beat out of him. First off, there wasn't enough gore though. No, definitely not. First off, I liked that we got to see the layout of the upstairs of their house yeah which was kind of nice but she kicks his ass from her room through the hall and down the fucking stairs yeah well and did you notice that um as soon as ted realized joyce was watching he He stopped fighting back yes and, it, like, that was the moment where it was obvious that he was setting her up. Yes. And so he falls down the stairs <laughs> fucking brutally and is dead. It was a good fall. I mean, I hope he had a stunt double. <laughs> I'm sure he did. Yeah. Joyce runs downstairs, checks his pulse on his throat, checks his pulse on his wrist, does it completely fucking wrong because she uses her thumb. Fun fact. That's why they took that part out of CPR certification is because something like 80 or 90 percent of people do it wrong and they just can't yep. find a pulse. So they don't even tell you to look for a pulse anymore. No, that That's why they changed it to you have to tap them on the shoulders. Hey, hey, <laughs> can you hear me? Are you there? Yeah. And that, yeah, because no one no one can find a fucking pulse. Yeah. BT dubs were both currently CPR certified. Yes. So anyway. For different, completely different jobs. Absolutely completely different jobs. And so the cops show up. We see him getting zipped up in a body bag. Fuck. Buffy's a dumbass and tells the cops that she hit him. And I'm like, no, don't do that. Oh, you misguided, honest girl. Why? There is a a video going around that I've, I've seen it on Facebook. Okay. And it is a video of a few lawyers. Oh, yeah. And they're basically saying, if the cop asks you this, you tell them nothing. If the cop asks you this, you tell them nothing. (laughs) Shut the fuck up. (laughs) What do you do? You shut the fuck up. (laughs) Cop pulls you over. What do you say? You say, why'd you pull me over, officer? Am I being detained? No. And then you shut the fuck up. I love those guys. Yeah. And you know what? They're absolutely fucking right. Yes, completely. Because I know this for a fact because I almost became a cop. Mm-hmm. Or rather, I almost went into fucking academy. But the, the point is, it works because a cop's job is to find something to fucking arrest you for. Yes. That is legitimately their job. And if you don't say anything, they have a lot more trouble. It is the court's job. Yes. It is the lawyer's job to prove you did a crime. It is the cop's job to arrest you. They don't have to prove you did shit. It is a lawyer's job to prove you did shit. Anything you tell a cop fucks you. Period. So if a cop asks you questions, you shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Buffy, you're doing it wrong. Yes. Yes. And take it from the guys who actually look pretty cool with sunglasses on when they tell you to shut the fuck up. I would I think hire they're smoking th- pot in the commercial. I would hire them either way. Yeah, pot's totally <laughs> legal in our state now. BT Dubs. Well, that that's the whole premise because it's oh, they're talking what that's about. Yeah, they're talking about legal marijuana oh, specifically, okay. and they're saying no. If a cop asks you anything, you shut the fuck up. Nice. But yeah, and she confesses to hitting him they're at the police station she tells him the whole story of uh he hit her yeah she beat the shit out of him this fucking cop though she's like well he hit me and he's like oh it doesn't look like he hit you very hard and i'm like shut the fuck up and she's like i don't bruise easy which yeah i mean she's the slayer she doesn't bruise easy. sure that It's not a fucking vehicle accident. What are you, an insurance salesman? You know, it doesn't matter if she bruised from it. Like, he even said, yeah, he was a pretty big guy. 
But yeah, I mean, I guess for the most part, he was pretty reasonable about it. It was really just that one statement that I was like, uh, and they didn't press charges. Yeah, certainly not um, yet. He emphasized that fucking part. Right. Um, and I mean, I can scarcely blame them for for wanting to do more investigation first. No, you can't really blame them. So next day at school, Buffy goes to school first off because she can't just stay at home. Can't blame her. Um, I want to make a mention of her outfit in this scene. So she is wearing overalls that are too big for her. Yeah. And I think this was on purpose. I think the costume department did this on purpose because it specifically makes her seem small and vulnerable. It was like, no, she was trying to hide in this baggy and what she felt, what she felt was unattractive clothing. It really emphasized her mood and character in a way that I haven't picked up yet from the the wardrobe department. No, wardrobe was on point with that choice. The police are on campus. Mm -hmm. Xander is like, oh, this is... This must be some creature feature bullshit, right? You know, points for Buffy. Personally, the whole time I was like, why are you beating yourself up about this? He was a depraved, invasive, psychotic control freak. And he hit you really hard. Yeah. Uh, Like, that was not a love tap. That was not a light hit. It bashed her head into the fucking cabinet. It bashed the Slayer's head into a fucking cabinet. Yes. <laughs> and a kind of negative points for her for not putting two and two together that obviously he hit her way harder than a person should be able then to. he should have physically been able to. Right. And I guess really my main point was uh, points for Buffy because she's a better person than me. <laughs> and you know what? I want that from the Slayer. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Fair enough. You, you mean besides me? No, I didn't ask. You, you mean you, you mean besides me? Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you, do you, do you believe? I didn't ask. We have to achieve our dreams, otherwise we wither and die. We're going to the other cool place in Sunnydale. Oh, let's see. From here. She runs into Giles. The police are on campus. They're investigating her. Uh, yeah, this episode's just full of people uh, giving everybody else the puppy dog pity eyes. Yeah, it really is. Like uh, uh, Willow and Xander be puppy dogging on Buffy. Giles be puppy dogging on Calendar. Um, from there, we cut to the library where Xander, Cordy... Willow and Giles are trying to figure out a solution. Yeah, we get a nice little powwow with everybody except for Buffy. Yep. Which doesn't happen very Um, often. No, it really doesn't. Uh, Giles is preparing to go out hunting that night. Yes. Because obviously Buffy's under a fuck ton of pressure. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Willow is is digging into Ted more. Good on her. Xander in this scene. Oh, the bit between him and Cordy. Xander is fuming about Ted and he's like, if I could just get my hands on him, you know, earlier this week (laughs) and Corey's like, I thought you liked him. He looks directly at her and makes fucking eye contact and says, I sometimes like things that are not good for me. (laughs) And that's the most accurate, truthful thing. Most self introspective moment. Xander has ever had up to yep. this point. But Cordy here, make, she makes a good point, kind of, in a way, in a Cordy way. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's like, but she's the Slayer. She should be special. She should be exempt from shit like this. Yeah. Like Superman. And Willow's like, well, sure, in a fascist society. Yeah, why can't we have one of those? <laughs> oh, God bless you, Cordelia. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> God I had to bless pause this. America. I had to pause this and laugh for a good solid five minutes at this scene. Uh. Just because she's completely fucking genuine. <laughs> right? <laughs> she's like, yeah, why can't we have one of those? <laughs> I also enjoyed the part where 
Giles was uh, saying that, well, it could be a little while before Buffy uh, regains her equilibrium because of the guilt of taking a human life. It's not a, a thing to take lightly or something like that. And Cordelia's like, oh, I... And she's completely earnest in this statement. <laughs> she's like, I guess you should know since you helped raise that demon that killed that one guy one time. Uh, yes, let's bring that up. <laughs> let's bring that up as often as possible. This is when... They realize that the cookies might be drugged. Yes. So they've got they um they're all like, God damn it, we want Buffy to be innocent. And so they're looking for dirt on Ted. But in a very well acted, subtle way, Xander's opinion of Ted alters throughout this entire scene. Because halfway through the scene, he discovers that he has some cookies that Ted had given him. He takes this um massive one eighty and he's like, don't sweat it, cute buddy. And he pats her on the head. Yep. Which is cringeworthy in and of itself. And, and she snaps the cookie out of his hand. <laughs> and I thought it was just a gag for a second. And I was like, is she inspecting that cookie for drugs? <laughs> and she is. Oh, wait. She actually is. They're in the lab. Yep. When they cut back to these guys from what, uh, from a very brief kind of bullshit scene with Buffy yeah. and her mom. Where they're not talking about shit. It, that's literally the whole the, scene. Yeah. I don't want to talk to you right now, Buffy. Go to your room. That That's lit. Cut yep. back to the school. And holy super forensic chemistry willow. Yeah, seriously, though. Like, this is shit the FBI would have to take a lot longer to do. <laughs> well, bureaucracy. I guess, but it is shockingly difficult to isolate one chemical in a f like in a cookie. I can see that. Yeah. How much fucking shit is in a cookie, dude? But yeah, they they find out that it's the cookies are drugged with a sen essentially a sedative that makes you just kind of easygoing. And they said something about a little bit of ecstasy in there somewhere. Uh, she said that it is. Uh, it's like ecstasy. Oh, okay. It's in the it's in the same family I as see. ecstasy. So anyway, this explains uh, Joyce's and everybody else's behavior yep. around Ted this whole episode. Especially Xander's because he has been eating the shit out of all the food Ted has made. Yes. Then we cut from there. A quick cut to hunting where Giles is hunting vampires. Yeah, and count Miss Calendar... Shows up to apologize to him at the worst possible time. <laughs> they end up having a fun moment, fighting a vampire together. She shoots him with a crossbow. Luckily, Giles doesn't have a punctured lung, I guess. Uh, to, just so we don't have to come back to it. Yeah. Um, I want to just talk about the whole so, interaction between... So there's a lot of back and forth yeah. scenes. Let's get so, this one so, out of the way. Uh, she shoots him with a crossbow... She's like trying to find a a, spa a stake in his bag to to attack the vampire with. Yeah, because she's accidentally shot him. Yeah, he pulls the fucking crossbow bolt out of his back uh -huh. and stakes the vampire with it in one fluid motion, which is so fucking badass. That, that's hardcore. No, I like. It would be hardcore if Buffy did it, and she has super strength. It's extra hardcore because Giles is a librarian. Right. But later, later he says, they're talking about his wound, and he's like, oh, I think, I think I'm fine, as he's like dabbing the blood on the wound. Mm -hmm. He's like, I think I'm fine. Multiple layers of tweed is better than Kevlar. <laughs> yeah. I did catch that. Yeah, that was good. And then they're like, no, we got to get you to the hospital. And she, mm -hmm. and he's like, oh, oh, I think you're right. <laughs> yeah, he's a little trouble laughing. But other than that, he's in good spirits. Excellent. Back to Buffy's room. Yes. So I really want to parse this scene for mm. a very specific reason. Oh, dear. So it opens up. Should to... I get should I get the doll? No, no, oh. not that kind of parsing. I'm sorry. Go on. Like cinematography. Ah. Uh, so. Was it here? Oh, God. You're so weird. Well, further up, further down. Hot or cold, man? Put the doll away. Parse the cinematography already. God. So the scene opens with Buffy sitting in the same chair that Ted was sitting in when uh, Buffy had come into the room earlier, the previous scene. So she's, she's sitting in that chair, right? 
Yeah. She's sitting there trying to be the good daughter or whatever. And she's like, no, fuck this. I'm going out. She walks over to the window, tries to get up to open it and realizes that it is nailed shut. Yeah. Okay. Then the camera from this angle is outside the window Uh or from the window, not necessarily outside the window, but is looking at Buffy. So it's window, Buffy, room. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Ted comes into frame from the left of camera, which means he was in the fucking corner of the room, which where the fuck was he hiding? The whole time, yeah. She had to have seen him, and it really bothers me. It doesn't necessarily mean that it was impossible. I mean, sure, she probably would have sensed a living thing in her room, but he's not a living thing. That's a valid fucking point. Mm. And he is a robot. He might be able to move extra silent. Yeah. Shit. I, you know, like maybe he- it gives me at least enough doubt to think that maybe something extra is going on here that I didn't consider. Right? I mean, he could have been under the bed for hours not making a noise. Oh, that's creepy. Yeah. Dig this. Dig this. Dig this. Sorry, you has some wings. Fire beheading. Hurry up, sweet dreams. Sunlight. Hurry up, sweet dreams. And water. Usual. Oh, yeah. I hit him. With what? A desk. In my notes here, I wrote double fight because <laughs> yes. it kept cutting back b- between the fight with Giles and Calendar. Giles and calendar and the fight with with ted yep that was fun like i appreciated the way they cut them together but for our purposes it makes it difficult yeah um (laughs) this is when we discover that ted is a robot yeah like officially we get our first hint that he was a robot because he says you know i had to shut down just to get you off my back for a few minutes and then she cuts him with a blade and his arm starts sparking, and we see yep. circuitry and wires and shit. And uh, she cuts him with a dull nail file. <laughs> oh, is that what that was? Yeah, I thought it was like a letter opener. It's dull, you twit. It'll <laughs> hurt. More. It'll hurt more. <laughs> yes. Um, why a spoon? Why a spoon? It wasn't Cousin. a spoon, Rex. I'm I'm aware, but it was still dull. Stop asking me to spoon while we're on the air. I, the answer is still no. Stay in your chair, please, on that side of the room. Show I me said it. don't move. Show me on the doll where you put the spoon. I said don't move. Stay right there. It goes in the mouth, Rex. You're so gross. That's not the mouth. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we also get to cut to Ted's house, where Cordy and Xander and Willow are enacting a B&E. So Xander at this point has done several B&Es on this show. Yes, he has. Anyway, they break <laughs> into Ted's house. They discover a secret door. Oh, yeah. In the floor. Kudos to, to you know, Cordelia's fashion sense. Right? <laughs> she reads the room. She realizes the rug that's on the floor really doesn't match the rest of the decor. Yeah, that rug really did not tie the room together, no, dude. No, it, it, it didn't. <laughs> it didn't at all. Easy, man. There's a beverage here. There is. Okay. Clearly, you're not a golfer. <laughs> God. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> anyway if you want a toe I'll get you a toe they discover that am I the only one here <laughs> god damn it <laughs> alright moving along <laughs> thank you <laughs> oh I'm just waiting for you to interrupt me with the rest of the quote <laughs> See, that's why I said moving along is I can't remember how that quote goes oh okay <laughs> so moving along <laughs> <laughs> So moving along, they go down the trap door. They discover through all this, Willow's looking through the paperwork and has discovered that Ted has had four other marriages. (laughs) I loved the reveal. So they're down in this. I, you know, I actually really would have liked the decor of this apartment were it not underneath a secret hatch (laughs) in a dusty rapist cabinet, basically. (laughs) And because it's, it's, Pure 50s. Yeah, and it's so serial killer. Very much like, so. nailed it. And so Xander <laughs> opens this closet, and the look on his face goes from intrigue to, oh, dear God. No, he opens the closet, and he's like, nope. 
And closes the closet. <laughs> but we need proof. We've got it. What'd you find in there? His last four wives. And you know, it was a nice tidy little yeah. moment. They didn't need to drag it out. Yep. It it wrapped it up quick. It did everything it needed to do very nicely and quickly. Yep. And so back to Buffy's house. So at this point, Ted has knocked Buffy out and Ted goes downstairs and surprises Joyce. And I I like that she's not immediate like, oh my God, Ted, you're alive. Well, I mean, uh, she shows the proper amount of... Uh, respect for the concept of mortality anyway. Yes. And she's like, but you're dead and this is fucking terrifying. And his fucking story is that he was dead for six minutes. You know what? And then regained conscious or came back to life, but was still unconscious. Yeah. It, it was a fairly convincing story, actually. It was. Surprisingly. I would have bought it, personally. Maybe it was just his delivery, but... Oh, my God. When he was choking out Buffy, oh. he was like, you should have seen the look on the intern's face when I got up off the table. It was a hoot. Right. <laughs> but the, the part that really creeps me out, though, is he hugs Joyce and he's like, it's OK. Daddy's here. Oh. Oh, and the, just the I, tone. I hated the that. The tone that he says that. And it's, oh, it just layers of creepy. I was like, give me the worm guy. I want the worm <laughs> guy back. Yeah. But Joyce is questioning the situation she she's like no i don't want to run off he's like oh we have to leave right now Mm -hmm. and oh yeah he's like uh he's like you need to stop telling me what to do because i'm not wired to take orders from women and i'm like speaking of subtext turning into text right (laughs) this is the moment where Buffy wakes up and then kicks out her fucking bedroom door. Yes. Oh, Ted, you didn't know what shit you just stepped in. (laughs) Oh, my, no. Have you ever heard of the band Stroke Nine? Uh Uh-uh. It's a 90s alt band. Okay. They don't have very many hits. Not many people know a lot about the band. Uh Uh-huh. But they have one particular song that opens up with the line, How many people want to kick some ass? (laughs) And the line goes, How many people want to kick some ass? I do. And that's <laughs> like, the, the moment she kicks the door open, that's what went through my head is, oh, someone's going to get their ass kicked. <laughs> so you felt at that moment the way I felt when she was fucking up the vampire in the beginning. Similarly, yeah. anyway. Yeah. Anyway, good. Yeah. It's not even a fight. In a nice <laughs> moment of poetic justice, she womps his ass <laughs> with the same frying pan that he made the mini pizzas with. Yep. Yeah, in the beginning of the episode. Which was a decent cast iron pan, by the way. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I love... It wasn't just the Foley, but John Ritter fucking nails this shit all the oh, way home. yeah. With his glitching out back and forth with the... I won't be spoken that way too in my house. Who wants some gravy? How about a nice game of par cheesy? I'm gonna fucking kill you. Yeah. Oh it, my oh god. Man. It was But she just pounds his head into a pulp with a fucking frying pan and made, a few hits. Make quick work of it, oh, frankly. Yeah. And you know what? Good, because the moment that the slayer can just open up the full industrial sized can of whoop ass that she's <laughs> capable of nothing should stand in her way especially not a piece of fucking hardware absolutely <laughs> a piece of hardware built in the 50s for fuck's sake and the makeup that they did on his face was actually pretty fucking good it was actually i think if it had stayed on screen any longer it would like it would have been glaring You could tell that it was raised up from his face. Better than I would have expected for a 90s show. Yeah. What are the odds? (laughs) They finally get rid of all of this fucking supernatural shit going on. But you got to watch out for those pesky serial killer robots that are stuck in the 50s. I will say this, though. Uh, Given how quickly she put down Ted... Yeah. When she realized what was going on. Mm -hmm. Tells me that, no, she actually did hold back quite a bit when she kicked him (laughs) down the fucking stairs. She held back enough. (laughs) By her standards. Right. So, uh, skip skip to the wrap up here. 
they don't tell Joyce that Ted was a robot. Yeah. Uh, what the fuck was that Ted about? Ted is classified as a serial killer or some shit and disappeared. Yeah. I guess they hid his body. And Willow got a hold of some of his parts. Yeah. Uh, there was a good line here that Cordy's... They're talking about the parts that Willow kept, and she's like, just a few. They're small. Uh And she's like, oh, I guess you can build your own serial killer now. And Xander responds with, well, they're so hard to rent nowadays. (laughs) Movies, on the other hand, that was the heyday of movie rental. (laughs) Yes. Um, Um, So Specifically, they're Thelma and Louise again. They walk into the library immediately... Buffy opens the door to the library and Giles and Miss Calendar are making out. Mm-hmm. And this is the second time in the episode that she's walked in on somebody making out and she's just had enough of it. Oh, hey Oh, jeez. And they brought it full circle from they the beginning did. of the episode. Gur arg. Is this for me? I must be ready. I need my strength. strength. Give, 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 give me more! Night, I shall give, walk in here. Hold on. You've got something here. How'd you feel about this episode, Rex? I fucking loved it. (laughs) Yeah. I think this is my favorite enclosed creature of the week episode thus far. Okay. Mostly because fucking John Ritter. Right? How the fuck did they get John Ritter? I don't know. He's so fucking good in this. Yeah. And... Like, it's obvious that he brings out good acting in the rest of the fucking people on screen. Right. Yeah. No, I'm right there with you. He was definitely a glowing beacon of fucking awesome. Did it occur to you at all that the plot of this episode, frankly, doesn't differ that much at all from the episode where Willow accidentally starts dating the computer demon? Except I, you know, I suppose you're you're mostly right. Uh huh. I mean, there's honestly the plot itself is rudimentary at fucking best. Yeah, honestly, I think that's one of the things that made it a much more enjoyable episode. Oh, it's they, all about the character. They learned how to use suspense a little bit, right? For a change. Yeah, like a. Half a season ago, they would have obviously revealed that he was a robot within the first 10 fucking minutes. Yes, because he died at like minute 23 or something like that. And I was like, I know he's coming back. Yeah. When's he coming back? And then he pops up in the window. So I had this great moment when, when Buffy first walks in on Joyce and Ted. I'm like, oh, shit, it's this episode. Yeah. And I remembered bits and pieces of this episode, Mm -hmm. but I didn't remember much else. And I was at first kind of like, oh, God, this episode. (laughs) So I never really picked up on all the nuance this episode has. There's quite a lot of it. Immense talent that these fucking actors can pull together for this. Yeah. Especially Sarah Michelle Gellar. This is, I think, some of her best fucking work on this show yet. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I fucking love this episode. I love John Ritter. I miss him. Goddamn. I'm sad that he's not going to come back on the show. Yeah. Here's to you, John Ritter, and to the captain and to Neil. It was a damn fine episode. Damn fine. Do you have a quote of the day? You know, I was thinking about that, and I think the closest I can come to a quote of the day here is when Giles is talking to Buffy towards the beginning and he says, uh, Buffy, I believe the subtext here is rapidly becoming uh, text. I have to pick the exact same one. Oh, come on, dude. There's I can't help it. It's too good. There's way more quotes than that, though. I know, but... It... Just pick okay, something okay, real quick that you, that you didn't say. Fine, I'll pick the tweed quote. Excellent. Because... There are a lot of great quotes in this fucking episode, but Giles is on fucking point with his cleverness. So yeah, I, I picked the the tweed quote. There there you go. Are you fucking happy I didn't pick the same one as you? No. Fine. Show me on the doll where Giles God said the damn quote. It. You and that fucking... I'm going <laughs> to bury that doll in a box in a field. Mm. And you'll never see it again. Show me on the doll where you got buried in a box in a field. <sighs> That'll be five dollars. <laughs> <laughs>
And I, I don't, I'm gonna, I'm going to tell you two words now. I don't make change. <laughs> 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 this has been Beer with Buffy. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, whatever. Like, comment, share, all that jazz. Special thanks, as always, to Ben Alexander for the lovely music in this episode. Find us every Monday on all your favorite podcast platforms. If the, you have one that we don't have, email us, let us know. We will figure out how to add it. Again, it's Beer with Buffy. My name's Rex. I'm Josh. Have a good night. What part of the doll again? God damn it! (laughs) You are the slayer. Lives depend upon you. I make allowances for your years, but I expect a certain amount of responsibility, and instead of which you enslave yourself to this this cult. You don't like the color? (laughs) You have a sacred birthright. You were chosen to destroy vampires, not to wave pom-poms at people. Why can't you people just leave me alone? You are the flare. Go ahead. Depend. I'm a watcher. I I haven't the skill. Oh, come on. By appealing appealing to your common sense. Common sense. Common sense. Everything you've ever dreaded was under your bed, but told yourself couldn't be by the light of day. One girl in all the world. Common sense. One girl in all the world. Common sense. It was a bit um, British, wasn't it? We. Wait, what have we done? Why are we watching this? <laughs>